Hello and welcome to Hamoink News UK. This month we had many exciting events. Here are some of the highlights. Regular activities continued at the Bishop's House this month with the Children's Club animated by Anna Hendon and the Arts Wellbeing Programme for Women hosted by Anna Vidabian. Our Bishop Habaki Monaghan hosted a range of interesting talks and events at his home. On November 15th, Dr. Harari Jabechian from Saudi Arabia shared his findings and experiences of Armenian lives in the Gulf Coast states. Armenian diaspora lives as I saw them. Jabechian is a leading Armenian theologian and is, an active, and is active in the Bible studies of Gulf countries. <laughs> Azerbaijan'de <gülüyor> 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 Lipanana, Suriyan, Irak, Barskastana, Fransa, London, Los Angeles, Santiago, Buenos Aires, Los Angeles, Asana, Yvonne, on November 19th, Dr. Christian Tumajan de Vartavan, the French Armenian Egyptologist and founder of the Egyptology Center at Yerevan State University, shared his family story, that of the House of Hassan Jalalian in Artsakh. His grandfather was an immediate assistant of General Andranik Uzunyan, who was the uh, leading member of the Armenian community in Egypt. He is also a distant relative of Galas Kumpenkan. It was named temporary, um, I forget, but who wrote the book Progress and uh, Pedigree, or Pedigree and Progress, um, actually shows in this book, which I've recently ordered, the ancestry of the Queen of England all the way back to the Bagratuni, the Bagratuni dynasty in a straight line of 70 generations. And this uh, King's Herald, and I'm in contact actually with the College of Arms by, by, for other reasons, um, actually showed unequivocally the, the, the connections. And this allows the Queen of England to say that she belongs to the one of the oldest Christian royal dynasty in the world. And these are facts. Dr. Haras Shilingaryan discussed the sacrament perceptions of sexuality embodied in the wedding service of the Armenian Church. In say Amos Nutian Masin, Hayerino Gosing, Sexy Masin, Ankerino Gosing. We speak about marriage in Armenian, we speak <coughs> about sex in English. How human sexuality, the idea of the human, uh, mm, a very important uh, aspect of human life, is understood and reflected. A, in the uh, wedding service of the Armenian Apostolic Church, but also how that service captures the theological teaching of the Church about human sexuality. Now, in contrast to how sexuality is perceived, presented, uh, understood, used, abused, commercialized in the 21st century, whether through the film industry or the fashion industry. When it comes to the understanding of the church, sexuality, and here it's important to bear in mind, not only the act of sex itself, that's not sexuality, it includes the act of sex, but it's not the whole understanding of human sexuality. So in the context of the church, sexuality is a gift from God to his creation. Baroness Caroline Cox pre delivered a presentation on the current situations of Christians in Syria, entitled Syria Frontier of Faith.
and shared her thoughts on what we can do to help our Armenian and Christian brethren. For coming, and we appreciate it very much, and it's an honor for our community members who have come here to listen. Welcome. Thank you so much. So I asked God how to use my role in the House of Lords, and the message came very clearly. It's a wonderful place to be voiced for those who do not have a voice, or those who have voices who are not heard. So I set up my little NGO, Heart Humanitarian Aid Relief Trust, to work precisely for those suffering oppression and persecution whose voices are not heard by the world at large. I, I was very privileged to be in your wonderful land of Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh during that war in the early 90s, the most high intensity conflict of that era. I used to count 400 grad a day pounding in on Stepanakert, low flying aerial bombardment, and it was a privilege to be with your people who had such courage and who, as I always say about Armenians, you don't only survive, you create beauty from the ashes of destruction. You go back to Artsakh now, and the rebuildings are beautiful. You have a beautiful new cathedral in the center of Stepanakert. And I love the Armenian people very, very much. But part of our remit, as I've said, is to work for people who are suffering oppression and persecution, who are not, on the whole, being covered by the media or receiving aid. And Syria came right within that remit. We were very busy, and we still are busy in other countries like Nigeria. A thousand Christians killed already in the Middle Belt this year in Nigeria, which we don't hear about. I was there two weeks ago. But Syria really had to come into our uh, portfolio. When we got to Syria, and we had a wonderful array of meetings, we met the Grand Mufti in Damascus, who's a very gracious guy, whose kids were killed by the jihadists, or his son was killed by the jihadists. We met the church leaders of all the different church traditions there. And wherever we went, the last thing people want was enforced regime change. There's no moderate armed opposition left, <coughs> so it just become another Iraq, another Libya. And wherever we went, people were terrified of British foreign policy. In other words, they're very grateful to President Assad and the Syrian army for getting rid of the jihadists and protecting them from the anguish and the terrors imposed by the jihadists. <coughs> All those to me spoke passionately believe that Syrians should have the right to determine their own future and to elect their own leadership without foreign interference. Fair enough. Deeply civilized people. As part of its annual financial obligations and commitment to transparency, the Armenian Church Trust UK presented its income and expenses for all programs and activities as prepared by Hovnan Hambartumyan, followed by a Q&A. Hello everyone, uh, thank you for coming to our annual general meeting, um, thank you all for being here for tonight. For the, uh, so we will firstly have a general uh, presentation of what the, um, the primate <coughs> has been up to during this uh, annual year and then we will have two short films after which we will open it up to the public for general questions and anything that you would want to put forward yourself. Um, so I'd like, um, I'd now would like to invite His Grace Bishop of Akin Manukyan to speak to the meeting. Thank you very much indeed and thank you for coming, find, finding time to come here this evening and thank you Manuhi, for this introduction. We'll, we are in Advent period, this is a nice George period and I want to first of all to thank God for this wonderful year, year that we live together, serving in our community. And personally, before I start my presentation, I'm personally thankful to our community members, everybody, to our priests, to our congregations, to our trustees, and to our benefactors. The Armenian Church Youth Organization, ACYO, organized a boat party on December 14th. It was a great chance to get together with family, friends, before Christmas and enjoy Armenian music, food and dance.
a la Verdun conducted a special service of remembrance on armistice at St. Yevisha Church after the congregation presented a wreath in memory of those who have perished in wars. <laughs> former head of exhibitions and education at the Komitas Museum Institute in Yerevan organized an Armenian lullabies workshop for parents and children alike. Coupled with a fascinating presentation on Komitas Vartapet on November 21st under the auspices of the Armenian Institute. The lullabies from various regions of historic Armenia included Herur Herur from Mush, Neni from Kesap, Orim Orim Peace from Bartizak, Dan, Dan Dan Dani from the Van Collected, uh, Neni Pala from Karin, Hatsum from Mush, Ruri from Sasun. Here is a brief clip from Dan Dan Dani. also organized an exhibition featuring the works of pottery artist Rita Ovanesov in the intimacy of her home, along with paintings from Ar other Armenian artists. For over 40 years, she has built a stunning collection of original pieces. So Aris Nartirian baritone and Christina Arakelian pianist shared an enchanting musical evening featuring works by Bernstein, Bach, Chopin, Hammerstein, Rogers, Sherman, Spenderian, Chukachian, and Arakelian herself at Saint Sarkis Church.
Dirty Earth to raise funds for their life-changing programmes, testing our general knowledge for a good cause. A number of different countries and have been doing so uh, since 2015. Um, again, um, you know, the, it's not just um, raising funds for um, you know kind of everyday things that, that these orphanages need. It's also kind of um, resources fundamental to their physical, emotional, um, and intellectual development. So there's also kind of programs that um, that are around to, to hopefully help them, um, you know, kind of integrate into society once they become adults as well. Um, over time, SAR so aims to provide uh, the underprivileged population, um, again, with the tools necessary to become accomplished, educated, self-supporting Armenians, so they've got every chance to, uh, as I say, kind of make it out there in the real world, in a country that, obviously, as we all know, is, is tough as it is, um, and hopefully sets them up for a much brighter future. Um, just a quick kind of um, summary, I suppose, of what SOAR have been doing. So they've been going for 14 years, coming up to 15 very shortly. They've got 141 chapters worldwide. So that's, um, you know, different cities, different countries. Dr. Zara Bawasian gave an illustrated talk on the 10th century Armenian Kingdom of Asparagan at Haidun on November 28th, organised by the AGBU, which featured capturing historic and current images from Van. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of AGBU London. This is part of our lecture series. Uh, fortunate to have, honoured to have Zara Bogosian here as one of the speakers from Basporagan, about which in some ways we know very little today, we were talking earlier, because so much of it has been erased, physical, physical uh, materials, uh, evidence as well as erased, but we have written sources, we have Armenian written sources that give a completely different counterpoint and Zara works on that and she brings alive the whole area through her work on the, on the medieval period about which we still know relatively little, it's not sort of... So the first thing I wanted to do is to ask you, when you hear of Aspurakan, what is the that comes to mind? What are the images, names, monasteries or people, may I ask you, Dick, um, who built one of the most famous, celebrated, bedazzling monuments of medieval Armenian architecture, which is the Church of the Holy Cross on Akhtamon. On 8th of December, the Ketata Armenian Community Sunday School hosted its Christmas celebration with singing, dancing and a special visit from Father Christmas, or Garan Baba. Headmistress Rosanna Tatulian congratulated the students and teachers for all their efforts putting their beloved annual celebration together. The Centre for Armenian Information and Advice organised a senior citizen's luncheon with Mayor of Ealing as guest of honour. Coming up, the Centre for Armenian Information and Advice, Hayashen, is starting a digital skills class for anyone interested in learning more about communicating and finding work online and also hosts English classes for beginners on Monday and Thursday, 1.30 to 4pm. CAIA runs an emotional wellbeing group and one-to-one -one support sessions in which participants are guided in exploring their inner selves and deliver, uh, developing positive coping strategies with the support of peers. You can find out more by calling them on 0208 992 4621.
Bishop Havaki Manukyan is hosting a year-end Thanksgiving dinner featuring a traditional khash stew or pacha prepared by Master Chef Edward Arakelian on December 28th. The Diocese is organising a pilgrimage to Jerusalem in January 2020. The trip will also include visits to sites of significant in Christian history, including Bethlehem, Nazareth and the Dead Sea. Bishop Havagi Manukyan, ACYO and St. Sarkis Church Parish is organising a Armenian Christmas carol celebration on December 20th at 6.30 at St. Sarkis Church, followed by a party in, in the Gulbegan Hall. The Ladies' Guild at St. Yerusha Armenian Church is organising an Armenian Christmas lunch on 6th of January at Yasham Restaurant at 14 Ealing Broadway. There will be a New Year's Eve party organised by Hom and Hom and Men with live entertainment provided by Mais Yesayan. A film screening in honour of Mr. Asadur Gozalyan on 31st of January at St. Yerusha Church will celebrate his lifetime commitment and unreserved service for our community. We would like to express our great gratitude to all of you for your support. Since we started three months ago, 8,820 people have viewed our clips with endless number of likes and shares on Facebook. During the month of November, 1,720 people watched our clips and excess of 5,780 minutes have been watched. If you have any comments or suggestions, please do not hesitate to contact us on hamayk.uk at gmail.com. Hamayk UK would like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and we join Bishop Hovak Imanukyan in his message of goodwill. Yay. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, soon we are going to celebrate all of us. Enjoy the Christmas. On behalf of Armenian Christians living in this country who we'll celebrate the Christmas on January 6th, I'm coming to congratulate all of you on this joyous occasion. Jesus Christ, Son of God, was born in the cave of Bethlehem. He was born to bring peace, salvation and love to everyone. Let us embrace Jesus with open hearts and leave room in our hearts for Him, so that this peace of God, His love, will prevail in our lives throughout the year in 2020. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.